So, today's daily we are playing with Stitchy and Remnant. Uh, all our units enter with Quick. We shuffle the position of all units in the train after combat, and all enemy units enter with Damage Shield. So, uh, that's definitely a challenging set of mutators because musical chairs and damage shield uh, shields up are some of the most difficult modifiers out there but fast draw will help us quite a lot yeah i did have a pretty good day bulldozer thanks was pretty relaxed today So, looking at the scores, most scores seem to be in the 44-45k range, which is not too insane. Uh, if we just manage to get a clean run with 3 turn boss rushes and no damage taken, we will be around that score as well. So, uh, that might be something we are aiming for today. So let's jump into the run and see what cards we get to play with today. Whew! Energy Siphon, Purifying Plants, Preserve. And Preserve and Energy Siphon both kind of play in a Spell Weakness Nuke deck. So let's see if that's something we can do. There's always the damage shield. That we have to get through first, so... Huh. These are interesting relics. Sketches of Salvation... With musical chairs it's a little bit better, because the random order of your units doesn't matter that much. But it's gonna be hard to make use of Tethys. It will help us in the early game by playing out our train stewards and drags. Uh, improved firebox on the other hand yeah it's it's not good with remnant sketches sketches is mostly good with incant from uh, from the stitching guard because you can get four incant units on the same floor but it requires a lot of removal as well then again, Firebox doesn't really seem that great here. Sketches of Salvation often leads to two turn boss rushes though. And we don't have Ascent to speed that up. So I'm gonna go with Firebox, just because I don't want to lose the points by setting up on the second floor. There is a sweep unit. Sweep with quick is obviously pretty strong. Frostbite is not that great with uh, fast draw because the frostbite damage still happens at the end of combat. And oftentimes you want to kill some enemies before they can attack. So let's go with the sweep spell weakness. We do have a lot of spell weakness now with the Tethys and the two energy siphons, but literally no spells to take advantage of it. So... Yeah, it's... gonna be a bit rough. This first combat. I will take the first good damage spell I see. That's for sure. Um, hmm. If I have Tethys at the front now, he might still be in the front. Hmm. I think I don't care whether Tethys is on the front or not. And I think I do want to have two drags here. 
Let's play the other train yard on the top floor to cover for a potential collector spawn there. Uh, although we need another source of damage to kill the collector. And it seems like this train yard is the best way to go about that. Maybe we can kill this Forge Disciple on the top floor. Would be nice. We have no more drags in the deck, so... I could just as well use the capacity for Train Steward. We can put a drag on the top floor though. And increase its lifespan a bit. Let's also remove this guy. Great Tethys went all the way to the back. Let's use a... F uh, that's not enough. I don't really want to waste an energy siphon on this guy, but... On the other hand, energy siphon is just five, uh, 6 damage from a frozen lands and... Yeah, it's not that great. Is there, there is another Frozen Lens in the deck, so I might as well throw out this one to deal some extra damage against the boss this turn. Um, purifying Cleanse doesn't help on the bottom floor. Let's use it on the top. And let's hope we have enough spell damage to kill this guy. We do not. Not even close. Uh, still, it's a decent amount of damage and we should have the kill on the top floor. Helical Crystallis and Crypt Builder. Both of these are great, great spells to get. We do not have this card yet. Crypt Builder is 10 more damage, which does amplify the effect from spell weakness. But Helical Crystals being multiple hits can also be an advantage. If we apply 10 spell damage to either of these, they will be the same. They will have the same power. I think I like Helical Crystallis more, just because we don't have any discard yet. Draft is pretty decent with Quick, and it's the only card I'm interested in at all. Yeah, Crystallis is oftentimes the better card. I agree. But you know, the offering on Crypt Builder is something you need to consider sometimes. So I think these cards are kind of balanced. Do I want the draft? That's the question now. We have Extinguished Adalus, Scorch Fell, and uh, Cleanse Seraph. We do have a Stygian banner with a Merchant of Steel. I don't think I want the draft. I, it's just the worst spell for us right now. Well, we can prolong its lifespan with the Purifying Cleansers, but that's not even that great. There's a sweep unit. Cold Celia together with Tethys will take out for, uh, backliners. And that's definitely worth a lot. And now that we have Cold Celia, we need to give her some sort of attack upgrade. So let's go to the right. Hi, Breeze. <laughs> Do we want a nicey silo fight or a Siren of the Sea? Hmm. 
I kind of prefer the silo fight over the cold cellia right now. So let's take it. We can always cut the cold cellia later if we don't want it. So that is enough to take our backliners and that makes me pretty happy. Multi-strike, quick, 11 damage, that's a pretty good unit. Now we only need to find a way to protect it. Next up, Mark of Invasion, should be no problem with all our sweep. The haste is a little bit of a problem though. But Icy Silo fight is strong enough to just kill Floors on her own because she has multi-strike and quick. But if we allow all these 8 units to go to the top floor, one of them will immediately go to the pyre because of overstack how overstacking works for the uh, for the enemies. So we need to helical or double frozen lands one of these guys. Problem with setting up on the top floor is obviously that we do not have a way to benefit from spell damage, uh, spell weakness. So this might be a giant mistake I'm making here. I wonder what happens if there are 7 units here. Can the Collector just not spawn then on that floor? Will he spawn on another floor then? The Frostbite is definitely going to be helpful in that situation. Where we don't have a way to use the spell weakness. Uh... Uh, there should still be another drag left in the deck. And I guess triple drag is the best we can do on this floor. Is there something else I want to preserve? Maybe. That might be. Oh, right. This guy has sweep. But at least we managed to take out uh, some of the units here. His drain stewards will just die because the boss has haste. The sweep is actually a problem. A uh, kind of significant problem. At least we do get a big chunk of damage in with the helical. But yeah, we will take 5 damage to this boss. I wonder if there was something else I could have done to prevent that from happening, but I can't find anything. And we still get a one turn boss rush because of the haste. I don't think I want a third energy siphon, that's a bit too much. Titan's tooth could be fine, but we have so much AoE damage that basically all we need is frontline damage. And Titan's tooth doesn't provide that. Like the amount of AoE damage in this deck with all the quick sweepers is pretty insane. And for that reason I am heavily considering a skip here. Yeah, I think it's correct. Entombed explosive and intent on death. Phew. 
I could pick up an intent on death just in case. There are a few very, very powerful units we could use it with. Entombed Explosive could help us right now with frontline units, but it's going to be pretty terrible quite soon. I think I will pick up a speculative intent on death. Even if we don't find anything to use it on, we can still at least use it on the collectors sometimes. Which is nice. Uh, definitely not votive key, that's basically not a relic. But Temperate Talisman is very nice with uh, Helical Crystallis at the very least. Hmm, Nameless Siren. Is that our answer to frontline units? I don't think so, to be honest. Mr. Historian. Uh, petty Theft will be pretty hard to use with this deck and the enemies having damage shield. Gift of Gratitude... Uh, I don't plan on picking up extra Ember, so it's just gonna be 90 gold if we can find a turn to play it out. Which is not terrible, but not great either. I would like to include a Petty Theft, but I can't see it working out. So let's pick the Heaven's Gold. It does protect our Pyre. Just in case something gets true through, which uh, is pretty likely that something gets true from time to time. This explosive sig chill is a bit of a problem, but at least with all the quick, we can take out the bombs pretty easily. I would like to have the Train Steward to tank the damage from these Extinguish Triggers. The problem with that is he's gonna stay around and I don't want that. So let's set him up on the next floor. Three damage on Tethys, that's a bit too much. Put down the silo fight. In front. I would love to jump block some of that damage. At least we can kill this guy. But only with the frostbite. Let's start getting some damage on Daedalus. We will need it. That explosive sigil is so rough. There's the final wave and we have the helical crystallis. We might be fine here. Whew. Hey Rossum, nice to see you. Ah, oh, these are some great damage spells. Great, great damage spells. Ice Empire is definitely nice for blowing up bosses. It's pretty cheap too. It will become more powerful over time. Uh, 
Ice and Pyre versus Ancient Synergy, basically. The discussion here. Uh, I do like Ancient Synergy, also because of the damage shields. It can pierce through damage shields, thanks to be it being a multi-hit. Lodestone Totem. Okay, that can that can definitely help with uh, reducing the incoming damage. And I think we want more draw because we have a very low cost deck. Except for some of the bigger spells, I suppose. I don't think I want to keep this Cold Sally around for too long. My bottom floor is now gonna be Tethys and Sep Totem and uh, Icy Silophyte. And we can get removals and a spell upgrade shop here, which is pretty nice. Yeah, flying kills will. I mean. We did kill Daedalus before combat started, so it's certainly possible. But we need a bit more scaling. Something like a holdover ancient synergy could be nice. It's gonna take up a lot of our energy though. Um, maybe... Uh, no, I think we want the more spell damage. If Conduit was available, that would be a bit better. Maybe I'll just hold over the Helical. It's a lot less explosive and also cost reduced it if we want to play it every turn. We can get a Surge Stone on a Frozen Lands, I don't mind that at all. And then reroll. Double stack and Energy Siphon, yes please. 10 damage on an Ancient Synergy. It's not bad, and then we cost reduce it as well. <laughs> because you are playing on the beta. No, I went for the Helical Crystallis. But I am looking forward to some cards, especially some of the champion changes. Especially one champion in particular, I'm very excited to play with. Non-boss enemy units gain multi-strike? Sure! We, don't, we just don't let them attack and everything's fine. We have multiple ways of achieving that. We can set them down to zero, we can just blast them down to zero HP. Mm. I can get the doubling card here and then nuke this guy on the next floor. Yeah, that should work out. I will still take 4 damage though, so I need the damage to go on Tethys. Unless, instead, I only single encant, but I still take 4 damage. Uh, I was thinking of uh, blocking with the Train Steward and letting the Train Steward die. 4 and 4 and then the Quill Marksman will hit, will hit another time. There's nothing in the deck for Intent on Death yet. As much as I want to set up on this bottom floor here, I think I should still do it anyways. And I think blocking with the Train Steward is the better way of keeping our units alive here, instead of playing the Intent on Death. 
I did pick up the intent on death uh, just in case. It was a very speculative pick. So. I do want to cast the Frozen Lands and the Helical on this floor. Uh, wait, the Helical alone is enough because that's spell weakness too. Don't need the Frozen Lands as well. The Collector will die to the Frostbite. And we need a few spells here on this floor. Definitely Energy Siphon and definitely Frozen Lands. That is enough to keep our Icy Silo fight healthy. At least somewhat healthy. Not too many spells I can play here. I can play the Preserve. I guess I can play a Drag here. Um, I will draw the Ancient Synergy next turn, which is gonna help me catch up on these units. I should probably still kill this guy. And then let's use the preserve for another sap. I should probably have preserved the drag instead. Not like it matters. Uh, I think we can burst this guy down with uh, Energy Siphon plus Ancient Synergy, that should be no problem. And then we Helical this guy. And now we are all caught up and don't have units we need to kill. Um, I can just hold over the Helical Crystallis. Um, do I want to preserve the Energy Siphon or the Frozen Lands? I think the Energy Siphon. The Frozen Lands... I will most likely draw into one anyways. Let's see how much sap we can generate here. That's a lot of sap and we will have a lot of spell weakness on this guy, but... He's not gonna be dead just yet, but we will have the hold over helical, so... It's pretty easy to finish him off here. That's gonna be a huge damage number. 756, nice, nice. Oh yeah, that works well with our deck. Mm, Guardian Stone. We don't need Glacial Seal, definitely better off with Guardian Stone, I think. I wouldn't mind a Cuddle Hex either, but Guardian Stone is just more useful. Crushing the Mias, if we want to set up on the bottom floor, it's gonna be very hard to use. Fatal Melting. Uh, that just won't deal enough damage to be worth it. Let's skip. Uh, I wouldn't mind the relic, but more important I think is... Well, we get a relic here anyways. But yeah, getting some spell upgrades is important. Let's look at the relic. Split Anvil! Ooh, this is good. This is great. I'm glad I went this way. And now I'm a bit sad we don't have a 3-cost spell. 
these frozen lances are surprisingly useful still. Hmm. I think I will just cost reduce the frozen lance for now and leave it at that. Maybe even upgrade its damage. Uh, no, that's that's not needed. I could also buy a perch. After fell, we are likely to go to the left side here to get some removals and the dupe. Wait, that's not fell. Yeah, the, let's let's buy a perch. Let's perch one of these cleanses. They are spells though, but not always easy to cast. Oftentimes we can't really cast them on our calm floor, so. And they are pretty bad. Mark of Innovation, okay. We can do it, it just means we won't get the bottom floor kill. We do have to set up on the second floor though. These guys we just have to take the damage from because we it's very likely that we will need the spell damage, the spell weakness. We can at least kill some of them off. Uh, which doesn't actually reduce the damage we take, but... At least killing the dam removing the damage shield from that guy helped. And we couldn't remove the damage shield from just one of them. And keep... it alive anyways. I do want this Clipped Guardian to become attackable, so I will throw away my Cold Celia here on the bottom floor. Uh, using these damage spells on the bottom floor doesn't matter, so I will just use them for Incarnate. Uh, It should be enough to kill this guy. And here on the bottom floor, I do want to keep this Cold Celia alive for a little bit longer, if at all possible. And I will even freeze the drag to do it again next turn. Sky already has them uh, spell weakness on him, so this will deal 56 to him, which is not quite enough to kill him, but that's fine. He will have frostbite on also, so uh, I missed the chance to play energy siphon on my income floor though. Hi Hidden Away, welcome. Glad to see you. Let's use the Crystallis and then freeze the Ancient Synergy so we can play next turn. So, uh, I guess we start with the Frozen Lance to kill the damage shield from this guy. Helical Crystallis will remove the damage shield from the Harpy. And then we apply some spell weakness. Also, let's throw in a drag. Not that that will help a lot, but might as well. Some more spell weakness, and then boom. <coughs> that worked out pretty well. Frenzied Swarm, Crystalline Seeds, Glacial Seal. 
Not really interested in these. Sacred Wix Resin Removal. I think I still want the Resin Removal. To remove some damage shields. It's not amazing. But it can also remove some other buffs. Well, we are already past Crystal Cloak anyway, so... <laughs> Crystal Cloak is a ring, ring 5 boss and we are in Ring 6. Uh, let's remove a Train Steward for sure. And I guess Purifying Cleanse is worse than the other Train Steward. I think if we want to focus down flying bosses, we need more energy siphons. Well, I do want to set up on the bottom floor and I do want to kill the Absolver, but the Cold Celia can't really go there. Ah, that's a bit annoying. I don't want Cold Celia, Cold Celia to be on the bottom floor, but yeah. She just doesn't provide enough damage. This Cold Celia draw here is definitely not great. I could play out just Tethys on the bottom floor and Cold Sally on the second floor. That would work out, but it's not good because not only would the Absolver survive. Maybe it has to be Cold Sally on the bottom floor. Anything else is too problematic. Problematic. Preserve Tethys. How would that help? If anything, I would set up Tethys on the bottom floor. He does survive. She does survive the, uh, the damage from these guys, so wouldn't be the issue. need to start working on some of these statues. There's the silo fight. Oh, we currently don't have a way to play the totem. Definitely a huge problem. Uh, if we resin removal this bottom floor. Then we can play Ancient Synergy next, which makes the other spell free. Oh, we don't even need the Helical right now. This is our chance to kill off the silo fight. And we should use it. Wait, it's the silo fight that's in front, not the 
called Celia. Uh, not great. Uh, this guy already has spell weakness, so... Oh! I forgot that this guy would... Mm. <sighs> I'm screwing up this battle re left, right and center. How much spell weakness is this? 20. Ancient Synergy is 35 damage times 3, so 105 damage. Yeah, that's already enough for a kill if we can just get to... ...to fell. You know what? I think I really need to restart this run, this fight. I messed up quite a few things there. I think I can't... I just can't set up the silo fight on the bottom floor. It will, it will ruin me. In the long run. Uh, the cold Celia. Other than that, I think my start was pretty okay. Yes, we now do have to deal with some of these uh, scorches, especially because this guy won't die right away. And there's not much we can do about that. But we can deal with those few penances, I guess. Uh, can we protect Tethys with a simple drag? I think we can. Then we can play out both Discorchers. This guy will die. I want to work on this uh, Alabaster Guardian and let's preserve the Guardian Stone. Uh, I think I do want to start with Resin Removal into... Ancient Synergy here on the bottom floor. Can't play the Guardian Stone that way, but that's fine. Drag in the back, so they switch places here. Still, I can't play the Guardian Stone. Because I need to play other cards here. Um, if we want to kill with Helical Crystallis, which is more available, that's 56 damage. So to get to 1200, we need this to hit about a bit more than 20 times. So we still need to stack quite a bit of spell weakness on Fell. We can use the Helical Crystallis here, but even the Frozen Lands will be enough. But I do want to hold over the Helical Crystallis anyway, so... This might be very close to a kill, if not already a kill. Yep. <sighs> that setup did work out. Deep offering Siren Song Wax and Spike. Huh. Deep offering is not bad. 
Definitely a good comp. Siren Song probably not necessary in this deck. Because with all the spell weakness we could just as easily kill the enemies. And we do have good spells to do that with. I mean Siren Song is still a great card. Especially with the preserve in the deck. But I just think the buffering might be more might offer more to us right now. And is it still draw or is it Ember now with the deep offering? No, I think it's still draw. We do have the Anvil after all. We still want removals, we still want spell upgrades. Unit upgrades would mostly be for the extra health on these totems. Make them a bit more survivable early. That's not that high of a priority. We can have Conduit now if we want. Which would certainly help with the deep offering. I like having one instance of conduit on my champion here. We can get a holdover on a double stacked energy siphon and I think I am gonna take it. Deep offering needs the cost reduction because we can't really rely on the anvil for that. Let's also upgrade the final Frozen Lands with Consume. Hmm, is that something we are interested in? I guess, yeah. With the upgrade on Tethys, that uh, the Conduit upgrade, definitely. The Anvil is becoming less and less important, but that's okay. Let's remove the... Cold Celia now because we do want to draw into the silo fight as soon as possible. And let's also remove the final train steward. The drags can still stay in, they are very easy to get rid of. But ideally, I would remove them as well. They are just the lowest priority removals right now. Armor 20 is a bit of a problem. Because we do not have enough damage to kill a purifier through the damage shield. Tethys, Silo Fight and Lodestone Totem. And uh, Armor Totem as well. It's a nice setup. We got all our units out on the first turn. And here's our Helical. Uh, spell Weakness 7? Yeah, you can't take a Helical. Uh, we do have the Anvil though. So I do want to play the Ancient Synergy first. Uh, if we add another stack of Spell Weakness, that should be enough to kill you. Helical on this floor with another drag to get the collector. I do want to kill this guy immediately. It is important to me. And I don't mind keeping these frozen lances in the deck. They are 29 damage after all for zero cost if I play them on the bottom floor. Let's start this out with the resin removal. Um, this is currently dealing 37 times 3 yeah, one more spell weakness on you will mean you will only take one hit of the Ancient Synergy. Uh. 
And let's get that armor up as well. Spell weakness, spell weakness. Destroy the damage shield, destroy the gilded wings. And then draw a new hand. Let's play the intent on death and freeze the resin removal. Okay, this is this is going perfectly. Uh, what do we want to freeze for next turn? Probably the deep offering. So let's start with applying some damage shield and removing their da uh, spell weakness and removing their damage shield. Then we. Ancient Synergy for a giant amount. Play the other damage spells as well. And then Deep Offering for a hand of a bunch of energy siphons, but nothing else, really. <laughs> there were three damage spells left in the deck. Well, at least we will have a giant amount of spell weakness on that guy when he finally moves up to the next floor so we can really destroy him drain hmm no I don't think we need that there's the subsuming blade I was talking about just a little bit too late I would have loved to get an early subsuming blade in this deck. Uh, I think we still want spell upgrades, do we? Maybe not. <laughs> if any of the totals had any attack, yeah, maybe. Probably not. Because that would also mean he gains attack faster from his revenge. I think the right side is where we go actually. The dupe is probably more powerful. Units gain an extra upgrade slot. That might be very useful. And not with these upgrades though. Yeah, okay. Mm, I can see that. I mean, that's pretty good. I don't want to pay for unnecessary things, but I think a reroll is gonna be nice. Uh, none of these. Okay, um, so we are basically done with the deck. Icy Silo fight you would be a lot of spell weakness against the boss. I think that's what we gotta do. We only set up one floor, so we will hit that every second turn. And I do wanna perch. Not really. I'm quite happy with this. No, there's one card I do want to perch, and that's intent on death. Good thing this isn't Consume Seraph. Otherwise, this would be a bit scary. We need to make use of the spell weakness whenever we get the chance to. Spell weakness on the boss, I mean. We can't set up two icy silo fights on the same floor. I will just set up this one on the top for one to get some spell damage on the boss right away. But also, so we do have something to catch these light wings on the top floor. 
Wait, didn't I just say I wanted to set up a only single floor? I would actually prefer that if it were easily possible. Uh, it's probably not a good idea. I think we do need a second floor. This will be enough spell damage already. Spell weakness, I mean. But I do want to cast a spell here. It's better to wait, actually, because we can't make use of the spell weakness immediately. Okay, this is this is pretty good. Let's start with the frozen lands. Ancient synergy is not quite enough to kill, but uh, just isn't, huh? I guess we should use the hold over spell weakness thing. This is almost enough damage. It's enough to get him down to where the icy silo fight will kill. And let's play another drag here. Oh, wait. Why doesn't... Ah, because now we kill two light wings. Oh, maybe I messed up. Maybe I did just mess up big time by playing the second drag. Now I can play the silo fight this turn. At least not on the bottom floor. Mm. I do need to play damage spells against Seraph a lot because I can't just accumulate the spell weakness. Uh, maybe I shouldn't even bother with going for a flying kill here. It's just too difficult. How much damage can we do this turn? We can get 2, 4, 5 spell weakness, so we have 7 spell weakness. And then we can hit the boss with the Helical Crystallis for about 400 damage. It's not bad for a single turn, but it's nowhere near enough. And we need to take care of the bottom floor as well. Hmm. We do have the deep offering though, and there's an ancient synergy in our deck. That's 500 damage done to the boss. We can continue that a few times. Keep keep that damage num keep the damage numbers that way. Then this might be good enough. So the boss is accessible right now. And the ancient synergy is on our deck, but we can't play it on the top floor. But we can use the Ancient Synergy here on the bottom floor. Actually, this won't work out how I want it to. But at least we get a decent amount of spell weakness on the boss. No, it, it will actually work out because of the uh, anvil. 
It's another 500 damage to the boss. And we just removed their damage entirely, so that helps. Now Seraph is on the bottom floor, which means I can just unleash everything I have on the bottom floor. It's not gonna be a whole lot though. These guys will die, these guys will die if I throw a helical out here. At least this turn we have easy access to the boss and he already has three spell dam spell weakness on so this might be something it's not quite enough <sighs> i can't draw into more spell weakness with the deep offering and be able to play the ancient synergy Not quite enough. But I guess we can get the kill next turn. Which is still a flying kill. Uh, might be difficult here on the bottom floor. Might be a tad difficult here on the bottom floor. This will kill the front line. Yeah, that's that's good. Not gonna be enough. Ah. Almost forty two damage. Forty two damage short. If I optimized it a little better, it would have been enough. But still, we get the bo we got the bottom floor kill, and we got the uh, the fell. We got the fell flying kill as well. So and that's uh, pretty good. I think we did. We do have a decent score. Uh, not amazing. Because we did have a lot of two turn boss rushes, did take some damage from time to time. Still a pretty good score and it guarantees me a place in the top 10 for now. Um, very interesting deck, very spell weakness focused. Spell weakness is a bit difficult against uh, Clan Seraph. Not just in the top 10, we even managed to get the second place here, which is pretty good.